Good evening. Welcome to the midweek edition of the State of Business. I'm Nishani Pigira. Here are tonight's main stories. Sri Lanka State of Economy 2017 report by the Institute of Policy Studies released. And Minister Prema Jayantha emphasizes on the need to prioritize increasing quality of science and technology. In tonight's main story, the Deputy Minister of National Policies and Economic Affairs, Dr. Harsha De Silva, stated that pessimistic economic criticism should remain confined to the academic sphere and that in practice, social issues will be taken into consideration in a universal manner. The Deputy Minister also added that the government will possibly evaluate the feasibility of creating a service export-oriented economy along with the reform efforts. Dr. Harsha De Silva made these statements while speaking at the launch of Sri Lanka State of the Economy 2017 report issued by the Institute of Policy Studies in Colombo last evening. State of the Economy 2017 report is a critical assessment of the country's economic performance and near-term outlook for growth and macroeconomic stability. This year's report draws attention to demographics, labour markets and growth as its main thematic focus. According to the report, two of the biggest constraints holding back the labour market efficiency in Sri Lanka are its stringent employment protection laws and its low female labour force participation rates. As highlighted in the report are the areas of policy priority to revive Sri Lanka's medium-term growth outlook from the current rate of 4 to 4.5% include education, health and human development agriculture and land resource management, tourism, migration and climate adaption and disaster resilience. Reform is not only economic reform. We have to do other types of reform as well to extricate the country from the difficult position it was. We have to do political reform. We have to do foreign policy reform. Some have forgotten if we were going down that same path, probably by today, we would have had economic sanctions placed against us. We would have been hauled up to the International Criminal Court and be prosecuted for crimes against humanity. For a government, we needed to deal with those urgent issues at that time. Nothing is important as much as ensuring we win the peace in this country, grow at a little slower pace, 4%. But if that gives us the opportunity to ensure for once and for all, we are able to bring in the political reforms that the whole world is also asking us to do, not just our people who have promised political reforms, democratic reforms. The Minister of Science, Technology and Research, Susil Premajayanta, highlighted the importance of giving priority to increase the quality in science and technology, which will help Sri Lanka integrate into the global value chain. The minister further stated that the world is moving forward with the advancement and development of science and technology and research and therefore the government should keep abreast with global developments in these spheres. He expressed these views speaking at a forum held in Colombo last evening. The new communication technologies are offering new and radically different opportunities for education. Transformation in education is necessary to modernize the system where ICT is integrated at all levels of learning. The people of this country are asking the government to set priorities correct, to invest in productive areas, develop rural <coughs> industry, support SMEs and startups, develop export-oriented manufacturing and apply new technologies, transform the traditional agriculture to reduce waste in government, to reduce inefficiency and to bring in rational thinking and action to govern. However, the government has not been able to do any of these satisfaction to the people because there are so many stages that we have to pass. So why cannot we perform better? Many people believe that the root causes are the lack of futuristic integrative planning, lack of effective leadership at different levels and lack of a participatory approach to planning, policy and decision making. The people as citizens of the society cannot wait for another general election where they can express their views and therefore they must resort to democratic means of voicing through pressure groups and interest groups. Time has come for the professionals to get together and raise their voice and offer participation. In doing so, they can promote and use issue-based discussions at conferences. That is why we organize this conference. The discussion was organized by the Ministry of Science, Technology and Research under the theme Science, Technology and Innovation, Strategizing Policy Actions. 
Speaking further, the minister recommended certain proposals that need to be brought into effect by the government in order to ensure a proper financial and administrative system within the country. From 2015, all the members of the United Nations, the 192 countries, are talking about 17 sustainable development goals and 169 targets. I think Sri Lanka is the only country after the introduction of 17 SDG goals and 169 targets establish a separate ministry for sustainable development. So we are very proud as a nation. We are working towards achieving 17 SDG goals by 2030. Along with such change, we urge the government to revise and update the establishment code and the financial regulation so that attention of administrative law will focus on performance and doing things right as much as on wrongdoings. We are of the opinion that we have to amend the financial regulations and administrative regulations. We must give priority to positive action, risk taking, innovation and delivery of results. We propose establishment of a national planning commission by the president. An economic planning commission has now been set up. It should look into the formulation of sustainable national policies to utilize all national resources and foreign resources reaching Sri Lanka. Our professional groups must form into task forces and begin to advise the government through the national planning commission. Among other proposals, we propose setting up a senior management group in order to strengthen the top administrative hierarchy, setting up a public sector performance review committee to undertake periodic assessment of performance and performance of public institutions. If these reforms are implemented now, the academics, scientists and professionals at their levels will have an effective platform to work with the government. And now let's take a look at a few cabinet decisions in brief. The Cabinet of Ministers approved the landmark legislation of the National Audit Bill with two amendments proposed by the Ministerial Subcommittee, which is headed by Dr. Sarat Amunugama. The first amendment enables a recovery of an amount overpaid to a public servant or the recoupment of any loss caused to the government for which the public servant is held responsible. The Cabinet also approved the appointment of a committee headed by the Secretary of the Treasury to expedite the importation of rice. The decision had been made to allow Satosa to import 500,000 metric tons of rice to combat the shortfall of local rice production during 2017. This proposal was jointly submitted by Ministers Rishad Badudin, Mangala Samaravira, Mahinda Amaravira and Malik Samaravikrama. Time for us to slip in for a short break. There's more news on the other side. Do stay with us. Welcome back here with the State of Business. In more news tonight, speaking to the media in Colombo today, the Minister of Provincial Councils and Local Government, Faisal Mustafa, explained the benefits carried by the Provincial Councils Amendment Act. Speaking further, the Minister stated that 25% of the representation of both local government institutions and provincial councils will be allocated to women according to the amended Act. Minister Mustafa also emphasized the need to encourage capable women to participate in politics. This government has taken a very progressive step of having 25% women at local government level and provincial level. While saying that, I want this legislation to be purposeful. So, whilst doing this campaign of women in politics, I would like all of you all to agitate that more than one family member should not engage in even more than one tier of government. That should be our basis. That should be the platform. I don't want politicians to be members of local bodies. I want uh, social service leaders, intellectuals, philanthropists, who the community demands that they should enter politics. And also what I see is everybody is doing things piecemeal. We are doing things piecemeal. piecemeal. non government organizations are doing things in piecemeal. So here I want a collective effort to put a program where we entice women to enter the political stream. I would humbly request that we all put a collective effort, firstly, how to in increase women representation. Second, not to use women representation to empower the politician who is already there. 
to give him extra tools to strengthen his political. After this short break, it's a stock watch. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. Trading at the Kalama Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 35.93 points to close at 6,559.61. And the S&P SL20 Index gained 36.46 points to close the session at 3,870.42. Turnover was 1.9 billion rupees and 54.8 million shares were traded. And now let's take a look at the day's foreign exchange rates. And that wraps up the show for tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. Until then, thank you for watching. Good night.